Here we go. Glad to have you. It's fun. Fun. Yeah, a little liquid death for you there. They sent me a couple cases. I like it. It's good, man. I like it a lot. Yeah, it's pricey, but I love the artwork. Uh -huh. <laughs> but if you're getting free cases, that's even better. Um, someone linked me up with their marketing manager, said, hey, email this girl. Should they want to do something with you? But what they do is they just pretty much ship out free stuff to people that are doing things. You oh, know? rad. So I, you know, I emailed her probably saying, hey, you know, some introductory email. And she's just like, what's your address? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. Cases showed up in the mail. Dude, that's awesome, man. Yeah, you should do the yeah. same thing. I'll give you your email. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool, man. I'll drink them on there every time. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, yeah they're cool. They have great great artwork, too. Mm -hmm. Which I've been, I was like, um, that was one of the things I wanted to ask you about, too, was just the, um, was the artwork with, um, like, you guys have kind of adapted your artwork a little bit and changed it a little since the beginning, huh? Absolutely. I've noticed, like, a big, like, it's cool to see you guys kind of move with like the trendiness of things that are going on in the outside the tattoo world, just like clothing and yeah, you know the the button up shirts now with the patterns. Like I saw that getting big, and then I'm like, and then you guys have yours now. I was like, that's really neat to see, you know, and the the the, the more pastel-y bright colors and shit, yeah, bringing yeah. back the '80s, dude. It's it's working. It does, know? huh? It's rad. Man. Are we on the air right now? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're going, dude. <laughs> Fuck it. Where's this going? <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> No, you know what? I figured it was a good way to just start rolling, you <laughs> I'm know? I'm down, I'm down. We had one of our chain stores that, um, we scored a chain store that's doing well right now, and they started requesting the bright colors. And at first we were like, I don't know, but they're moving, and they keep requesting them. So I think some of it's a little bit of maybe they're like leftovers from their order, yeah. so we put it out there, but they're selling. Like, there's like these mint greens and and and. I mean, I can't wear half of the colors. I'm a black T-shirt guy. But me too. Me too. A yeah. lot of them are are moving. So yeah, you know, yeah. I'm getting older. I can't. You know, I don't know what the trends are with. Yeah, the, yeah. Well, if we kind of remember when we were kids and saw like, because how old are you? I'm 45. So I'm 43. So we're about that same era mm -hmm. where like everybody that was just a little older than us was like the 80s gear. Yeah. And we got the trickle down <laughs> and then like we got like, you know, then we had all their 90s stuff Gr came grunge. in for our, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, you know. But Absolutely. it's like all the kids are older. So I'm like, oh yeah, I never got to wear any of that kind of stuff, you know. But Absolutely. it's funny to see how popular it is now. And seeing the kids bring it all back. You're like, dang, you know, it's, it's really cool to see. Yeah, and I think Ryan, he's, he's still... He's still always looking for for new artists, you know. Yeah. He's always like he's not as, as well. I don't want to say he's not on social as much as me because I see him constantly bringing a new artist. He's got to find him some way, you know. Is, but yeah, uh, yeah I, I think just I don't want to say chasing trends, but you know, uh, you got to do what sells. You got to you got to stay relevant too, right. you know. And, and as you guys know, like with clothing industry, it's such a hard business that you see companies like stay on that like die on that hill mm -hmm. because they stay in one thing and and they don't venture out a little bit and take risks absolutely and, and I, I think I, that's important i th i compare I, I don't like using the word fashion because we're not like a fashion brand you know but i guess clothing whatever whatever terminology you use but I, I compare it to music a lot because just like music um you, you got to reinvent yourself totally. you, know? you can't you can't keep living on that one hit wonder you know yeah 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 and when, you know when we first started a lot of it was you know, a lot of the black and gray, day of the dead stuff, you know, a lot of the guys were pumping out and, yeah, and it killed it. But it, that, it did, it did. If we put a shirt out like that now, they'll be like, oh, this looks like it's from, you know, 2005. So, totally. <laughs> that, oh, that's a trip. Yeah, I didn't even think about that because that stuff has kind of like trickled down a little bit. It was mm -hmm. always like roses, day of the dead stuff was popular for a while. Yeah. yeah, and I've noticed like now even just like that, I was looking at what brought it up was that skull on the can. Yeah. You know, more of that kind of like 80s like style totally. skulls and stuff is coming back, which is really neat. You know, it's just a different style of artwork and more like, like I guess, animated looking to you, some of the stuff. For know? sure. Yeah. And I mean, I think Ryan would be able to answer this question better than me, but I think we're still probably about 70% of the artists from, is from tattoo artists. But, you know, the other 30 or 40 is freelance. So, you know, we got a lot of guys yeah. that just pumping out art you know and i know ryan has some of his favorite go-to's that are just good at pumping out art and you know a lot of it has more line work or more totally. um, it's just that's t-shirt like friendly too yeah. yeah you guys need that because i remember the first time i did one with you guys i was like 
you know, he was like coaching me on how to do it. Like, don't paint to the all the way to the edges, and because I'm such a like a tattoo artist, like in the box, yeah, you know, yeah. and like some of these artists, you know, they leave it for interpretation, and it works better as a shirt that way. Hey, I'll tell you what though, I was looking in my closet trying to find my Jeremiah Barber shirt to wear. Oh, <laughs> you were. That's it was funny, too, it dude. was too faded. I couldn't bring it, so that That's means you got, that means you got to do another one, well, man. You're old. <laughs> it's outdated. Ryan hit me up to do one last year during like the beginning of COVID, you know, and like I'm like, oh hell yeah, I got time to do it, and for some reason. And just that first couple of months ago, I like cranked it for a little while, but then I got so caught up in the like everything going on in the outside world that I kind of just stopped like working on it. So I have this painting on my easel still oh, really? in my garage for you guys that's like two hours away from being finished. I was gonna say, what percentage of the it, done? It's like, dude, it's like 90, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, every day I walk out there, I'm like, I gotta finish that painting. Yeah. Even yesterday, I was like, should I paint today? And then I start doing other <laughs> shit, and I'm like, no, I'll get it. See? You know, it's just yeah. one of those things. But. For that reason, Ryan has to have his freelance yeah. guys too. You well, know? it's great because you guys have this pool of people that, like, yeah. you know, it's it's pretty unlimited. You know, like, because even if you just stick stuck with like some of the same guys, they could pump out enough stuff for you guys mm-hmm. needed. And then, but all these new artists coming in, and so many people are so good at like just every style now that you guys have an unlimited pool to choose from, which is really oh. cool. <laughs> Even though we have a lot of tattooer friends that have done a lot of shirts, it's still hard getting art from you guys. I mean, this is a perfect example right here. You know, yeah. like you got one that you've been working on for a year or two. Um, we hear that story all the time. You yeah. know, it's like no matter how many friends we've had contribute art, we're constantly tugging on sleeves, like giving reminders. Totally. You know, and and you know that's just that's just the way it goes. You guys make a living off of tattooing more than you know painting. Yeah, yeah. So it's, that's what I was gonna say too. It's like some of the older guys are like. You know, they're tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're more tired at the end of the day. Yeah. I don't want to pick up a pencil when I go home. You know what I mean? Yeah, but the younger kids family. Are, the younger kids are driven like mm-hmm. we used to be, you know, and just drawing at night, drawing for everything. You know, they live that life. And yes. You get older, you start having family. You're like, no, I just want to go home and hang out with the kids. Right. You know, and and that just kind of happens. It's really weird that way, you know? Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. when you, yeah, when, I mean, all of us were hungry when we were younger. You totally. know, all of us are... You know, totally. chilling out a little bit more. Maybe not <laughs> yeah, all of us, yeah. but more than we used to. But yeah, and we, and we get off on that. We get a kick out of using our platform to find diamonds in the rough. You know, yeah. to find this this youngster who is fucking sick, but no one really knows of him just yet. Totally. You know, and, and and if we can put him out there and you know get him some more business, that's fun too. Yeah, and you guys yeah. have done that really well, which is awesome. You know, like. Um there's always companies that come into it like a culture or whatever and that's what you were saying about fashion too like i i think you guys are more of a part of a culture than you are fashion you know yeah. what i mean like because yeah. you guys have kind of come in and then made products to help the industry too not just t-shirts and stuff you know mm-hmm. so it's like you guys are doing clothing but you're also making the backpacks and the, all this stuff to help out artists which is really cool you know i, I love that aspect too and thanks that that really gives back a lot too you know and i <laughs> That's the that's the blessing of having Ryan being a tattooer. You know, he's yeah. thinking like you guys. He's thinking, how can I help these guys out? You know, that's like rad. so now, you know, a couple years ago, you know, he's 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 designing these big backpacks with all the bells and whistles, all this cool stuff. There was one that he ended up putting a, a stop on it, but it was badass. It had so many cool elements. But now, people don't need those big bags anymore. So now he's yeah 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 he's re- really changed yeah, yeah he's yeah, realizing yeah. you know you guys don't need these big bags bringing you know all these machines you know and so now he's focused on focusing on smaller bags you yeah, know that you can yeah. take for the weekend and still get by that's true i guess he had that the amount of stuff you can bring now with all the like technologies come yeah up is a lot less right. i mean you still got your old school guys that bring all their machines and stuff and their yeah. big power pack <laughs> you know <laughs> but now it's all built into the machine you know so for some people which is crazy too you know yeah but That's he is he's 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 luckily he's always trying to think you know how can i how can i help you know how can i help these guys out what yeah what 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 value can we bring so you yeah, know. it's really, really and i always i always like to remind people that you know my business partner ryan smith Instagram color crimes. You know, he is a tattooer of like 25 years, badass tattooer, badass artist, badass painter. Um, you know, I do want to remind the world that I don't tattoo, but he does, you know, yeah. so he, you know, that, that of course helps out. It totally does. Yeah. Yeah. It gives you guys some credibility in that aspect. And I think even without that, by, you know, after a few years of you guys being in the business, that happened anyway. Like, as far as like people knowing you weren't in the business just to like exploit take. It. Yeah, exploit it, exploit it. Yeah. Exactly, you know, and I think you guys, like, totally earned that. And that's why I don't ever really, I don't hear bad things. Do you know what I mean? Like, you hear bad things about artists or whatever. I never hear anything bad about that's the, cool. 
you know, you're. I mean, even though I am a little out of touch for the last couple of years, I guess we all are with conventions being right, down. Right. You know, but I don't hear negative things. You know what I mean? I tell people that too. You know, it's like. I'm sure there's plenty of people that don't like us and don't like what we do. I don't know. I assume. I'm sure there's haters. With yeah, everybody. exactly. <laughs> they say with success come yeah. haters. But luckily, they don't chirp off on our social media. You know, yeah. we don't have people, you know, saying, oh, you fucking vultures or fuck off or this or that. Luckily, we don't have that, you know. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it happens, but I just, I don't, I don't see it. I don't hear it as much, you know. I mean, I'm not saying it's never happened, of course. I'm sure it has. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure it has, too. But I think, yeah, it's the, the quality of artists you guys got, too, like, of these people backing you that like yeah. really like kind of help with that too because if someone starts chiming in some of the people that they love are going to come on and yeah. defend you guys you yeah. know which is really cool it's like when i hear somebody say something bad about bob terrell i'm like that's impossible right like well, you don't what know did him. you do yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean like how did you approach him because to me i mean i've never seen that guy be a bear guy. you know what i mean so yeah. it's like that kind of same but you've heard a story of some someone saying bob was a dick yeah 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 and i was just like what did you do how did you approach him you know they I mean? misinterpreted like, it totally that's what i thought he doesn't I've, have i've worked with him in many conventions that dude will stop and put his machine down and talk to anybody <laughs> you know to the point if you're getting tattooed you're like mad like because i've been tattooed by him by a convention and been uh -huh. like bro <laughs> you gotta stop talking to everybody you know like i'm Dude. getting sore over here man you know <laughs> so. hey you know you know um my record of how long i've been tattooed is from bob and ralph nonweiler oh i remember that day i was 16 there, and yeah. a half hours that was 16 and a half 16 and a half hours. hours same thing he kept stopping and saying hi to people <laughs> taking pictures yeah and half of them were my friends so i'm like Get the fuck out of here, motherfuckers. He's tattooing me. <laughs> totally. Stop saying hi to him. He's yeah. too nice. He's going to stop and say hi to you. Beat it. Don't even say hi to me. I'm in yes. the zone. Yes, go. Go. <laughs> 16 hours. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. We it, started at 3, and we ended at like 7.30 the next morning on the Queen Mary. Wow. And, of course, you know, breaks, and um, there was a time where you know, I think Bob even went and did a seminar for a couple hours, and Ralph was tattooing me. But still... Yeah, yeah. Pretty much nonstop, sixty and a half hours. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah they're very, they're very like uh, slow paced. Yeah, it wasn't a painful sixteen yeah. and a half hours. That is know? the one good thing about Bob, for right. sure. Yeah. Right. It's not until like the last hour where you're like, "Stop wiping me," yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of thing. You know, like is when he's like checking every little detail and they keep wiping. You know, that's I remember that about Bob. But the first seven hours or yeah. of the eight, he's staring. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally. Sure. But yeah, if anyone sure. said Bob was a dick, they just... The only thing... I didn't even see it, but I had one of our assistants... I forget what. He had to go talk to Bob at Mario's show in Vegas. And he said... That, I don't know. He, something about the stencil. You know, he got me. He's like... God! I guess he threw something to the ground or... You know, but he came... My assistant came back. He's like, dude, I've never seen Bob like that. He got so mad. I was... He took it and he threw it to the ground. <laughs> I was like, Whoa. You're like, yeah, yeah, I've never seen that either. I've never seen that either. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. But, you know, yeah, wasn't yeah. Getting mad at him. Someone, yeah, I, just, I guess that would get him because he's so, like, meticulous in that way about his mm -hmm. art. You know, that makes sense and shit. Yeah. That's funny. Now, I wanted to ask you, too, like, about, like, um, because I know a lot of people want to, like, come do shirts for you guys. Is there a protocol for that or anything? Like, or do you guys just hunt them down? Do you want people to contact you about that always, kind of stuff? Always looking for new artists. Um, I mean, we push people to tag us, you know, on Instagram, and we're checking the hashtags, you know, soul and clothing. But you can DM it to us. Uh, you can put it in the mail. It doesn't, of course, it doesn't have to be the original. Yeah. You, can, you know, if you go to the website, I think there, there's an email, info at soulandclothing.com. Um, so it's one of those things where there's so many ways to get at us. You know, if someone totally. if someone comes at me being like, dude, I've been trying to get a hold of you. It's so impossible. I'm like, you're a liar because, like, I'm pretty much checking most of Solon's DMs, yeah. you know, and, and, and we got the email and we got Facebook, which there's all, any, anyone trying to get at me, it gets forwarded to me. Anyone trying to get at Ryan, it gets forwarded to Ryan. You and know? sometimes you got to go further than just the one time. Like, totally. You, it might get slipped. We have open, do open door policy. Yeah, yeah, sometimes like, you got to try it again. Yeah, you know, true. Like, sometimes shit gets missed. Absolutely, especially <laughs> on the DMs, you know. Yeah, like it, that especially. I mean, it's a team effort. We do have a small team, but a lot of it's me. And, and there are times, if I'm on vacation, there might be three days where the DMs get neglected. Yeah. And that, it does happen, but. At the same time, it's open door policy. We're always looking for new artists. We're always looking for new art. Ryan makes the decision on that, um, but you know, and he, yeah, he he knows what he wants, and yeah, that's. Cool. I tell people, you know, like I run, you know, like the marketing, PR, the events, that side of things. I'm more, 
I'm more the personality. Ryan's more the brains. You know, totally. Ryan's my, Ryan's like Oz. You know, behind the computer yeah, making yeah, everything yeah. happen. Behind the curtain. Exactly. Shit. Exactly. <laughs> That's cool. And you know, luckily we've been doing this. I mean, shit, 20 years now. It's crazy. And, and you guys have had a lot of artists involved. Have you ever sat down and been like, oh, we've had, like, you know, have you ever counted how many artists have done stuff for you? I think it's over 500. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. It'd be cool to see the list of countries too. Yeah, I remember Paul Booth did that one time at the end of his like documentary thing of like all the artists involved in all the countries they're from. Yeah, and then you're like, oh shit, like it's cool to see that map. You know, well, I tell like, people like, I mean, you gotta you gotta sell a lot of t-shirts to make a living. You know, like I, you know, when you when you when you search up Solon on Instagram, you're gonna see all these Solons, all of our distributors pop up, and that's really cool for me. Soul in Taiwan, Soul in Colombia, Soul in Russia, you know, Soul in Venezuela. But at the same time, a lot of these, a lot of these um, distributors, are, they're making real small orders. You know, it makes us look big, but they might be placing a few hundred dollar yeah, orders yeah. every few months, which you know, that's that's awesome. Every little bit counts. Totally. Uh, but we almost do better internationally than we do here in California. Oh wow! Yeah, that's I, surprising. I, I, I tell this story right here. I remember, um, I think Ryan was trying to get at Bug about doing a shirt and Boog, you know, kind of shunned us in whatever way, you know, not disrespectful or nothing like that. But then a couple of years later, I remember we saw him, I think it was in Utah at a convention and, uh, and he, we went up to his hotel room and I remember, you know, he's sitting there and he's, you know, he's, we were young and green and, you know, he's sitting there like breaking up weed and he's giving us like this speech, you know, but he pretty much said like, you know, a couple of years ago when you guys asked me to do stuff, I wasn't interested. Now I'm traveling around the world He's like, I'm seeing your stuff in Russia. I'm seeing it in Asia. I'm seeing it in Europe, you know, because, you know, our thing is we can pay you for the art or we can make print shirts, you know. So it's yeah. like when we when we get these 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 artists in different countries getting a box of shirts, that's like a little spider web, you know. So it's like sure. that's been like one of our you know little secrets that I just let the cat out of the bag. But you know that <laughs> you're throwing this flag all around all around the planet, and. They're getting a box of shirts. Now their clients, the artists in their shop, you know, their neighbors, their mom and dad, whoever it is, you know. So you do that down. enough, it's it's these little flags going up yeah, all over the place. Yeah. And you know, but Bug their shirts out and then they people see those and they're like, Where'd you get that shirt? Exactly. Yeah, but Bug's really like, cool. dude, I've been seeing your stuff so much around around my world travels because he went on a travel and spree like I always did. And he's like, I want to work with you guys. But that was oh, cool. cool. You know, I was like, yeah. oh, R.I.P. Okay. to him. Too. You know, that was before we were traveling. So even though we knew, you know, we started getting distributors and we're shipping, you know, shirts to different artists that were doing artwork, to actually hear somebody who's got feet on the ground to see say it. it, I was like, oh, that's that's cool. Yeah, that is cool. Because yeah. it did start spreading. Like, it was everywhere. Like, at conventions in East, all of a sudden just yeah. started, like, being, yeah, it was everywhere. Like, here you would see it, you know, because you guys are local. And it was like predominantly the shirt of the convention, you know. Everybody mm -hmm. had the Solon shirts, you know. And which one are you going to represent? And shit, which is cool, you know. Yeah, and we're, and wherever the tattoo community is strong, then you, we're usually going to be somewhere in there, you yeah. know. But like on Friday, I was with my filmer, filming um, these 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 uh, punk rockers. This guy uh, Tom Tom, he's in he's in a he's in a uh, punk band. He's an MMA fighter. He does nunchucks. He's a badass skateboarder. Like this guy's oh, badass. <laughs> uh, but some of his crew, you know, they were in the video and stuff and just bullshitting with him and a few of them like, you know, this small talk I'm like, yeah, have you heard of it? No, no, I've never heard of it. These guys are blasted up. So, point I'm getting at is we stay humble. Like even though some people think we're huge, like there's someone right next door right across the street who's got sleeves who's never heard a song. Yes. And that happens all the time you yeah, know what i mean like just yeah. when you think oh yeah we're, we're everywhere. tapped out in this area and it's like no no dude not. there's so many people that have never heard of us and there's know? always a new generation coming up too yes. which is great now that yes. you guys have like kind of lasted so long that it's a new you know all these 10 year old kids are now mm -hmm. 18 and mm -hmm. they're buying that well, stuff well that's too. what this guy who who we're uh, fucking with right now said his his mom is like was like a you know a tattoo model and in the industry and i think maybe she i don't know if she worked as a piercer or something like that but he kept saying he's like dude my mom's so pumped that i'm working with solon because she was always trying to get on with solon as a tattoo model you oh, know geez, even if it cool. was 10 15 yeah, years ago yeah. you know so that's really cool yeah that's that's really neat i also had a question too about that kind of like in there like if because i've had some clients come in and like they live out of state and they're like oh yeah i just went to go get this this just small piece done, but this guy like totally screwed me up. But he said he was a Solon artist. You know what I mean? And this is like a thing I've heard a couple times where it's like, well, what, 
what made him a solo artist kind of thing. So, like, is there a clarity in on that? Like, because what I gather from this guy's story is that maybe you guys just reposted one of his guy's tattoos, and then he's going around saying, "Yeah, I'm there's... a solo artist." He never done a shirt or anything like that, you know. And it's been an issue. I, I bet you know, and that's one thing for public, I guess, to just kind of know who's who, you know. Well, there's a few different things. Like, first of all, we allow tattoo shops to sell our product, and I'm sure my sales reps even pitch it that way. Like, hey, listen, if you sell the product in your shop, you know, now you're soul and family. And, you know, it doesn't mean you're a soul and artist, but, yeah. you know, you're affiliated. And there was, there's been some shops where all of a sudden there are conventions with, with, with logos on their banners and they're trying to act like they're soul oh, and artists. Oh, wow, yeah. Because they sell the product. And I've had to call them and be like, hey, you can't put soul and on your banner, you know, like, but I sell your product. Yeah, but you're, you're tricking them into yeah. thinking that you've done a shirt for us when you haven't, you know, or I, I recently, um, I guess there was a guy trying to start a, a, a tattoo school in Midwest and people were getting at us on the DM saying, Hey, this guy's claiming he's stolen this and stolen that where oh. in reality he's hashtag and stolen wearing stolen. If someone's sitting there, you know, throwing up shock and wearing a stolen shirt and we double tap it. Oh, all of a sudden we support this yeah, guy. Yeah, that's what I'm like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's like so these there's this Facebook weird gray area. Yeah, yeah, there's these uh, these uh, I don't I forget the terminology, but like uh, the Facebook um, clubs or whatever, and they're sitting there mad at this guy, and they're arguing, and they're like, "But even Solon uh, backs him. Look at they like this post, and they like this post." When in reality, we're just like, 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 like we're just it's liking just people that wear Solon. If he's wearing Solon, going and getting a coffee. We're going to give him some love, say totally. thank you. Thank you, love us, we love you kind of thing. But we whatever. don't know that he's doing shady shit or, or he, shady work or whatever. Yeah, of course. Yeah, or the, the, yeah, it's starting a tattoo school and then has yes. a logo on it. Uh, well, yeah, yeah the logo yeah, wasn't on it, but yeah, yes, you know. he's wearing soul and head to toe <laughs> yeah. starting a tattoo school. Yeah, yeah. So I had to let my team know, hey, don't. Don't like this guy's pictures anymore. Yeah. Don't post it. You know, like we're not affiliated with this dude and starting a tattoo yeah. school in fucking Oklahoma. Because you guys can be cool as fuck, but someone's always going to take advantage of it. You know, you can be cool as fuck. I like go through, like this guy's photos for supporting you. Okay, yeah, I'll support. I'll yeah. like your photo, this and that. But you know, someone's always going to take advantage of something like that. You know, for and sure. That's a bummer. Yeah, because I I did have that a couple times. You know, just from out of state dudes that are like, I just went to go get you know this lettering you know or something done you know and uh they're like yeah but he said he was and he screwed me all up you know and i'm like well you gotta probably that's on them too well i was gonna say you, you and i know <laughs> some you, you know. gotta like do a little more like well you are an amazing tattooer but i'm sure you haven't gay, had an a plus tattoo a hundred percent of the time no, no that too yeah yeah that's i mean i've heard of some you, some you, legends who had a bad day. Yeah, it happens all the time. You know yeah. what I mean? So uh, It's hard to be on point too. five days a week, for sure. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Especially, too. yeah, that, that has to do with the client, too, in the chair, you know, yeah. as, as well. But also, yeah, like I was telling my I was like my client, I'm like, well, you, you should probably do a little more research as well. Because if this guy's just saying that, well... Go or how did he work. heal this tattoo? Yeah, you know? that too. There is things, you know. And it, and then, it leaves um, the building. But it came to find out, like, this dude wasn't, you know. Mm. He just was claiming he was you know yeah. and it, it probably was the same scenario where he, he had some sullen shirts and you guys liked one of his photos so now he's like oh i'm a fucking sullen artist you it's know? pros and, and cons we got a big big family that looks out for each other and we're blessed to have it we you know we got yeah. we got our million instagram followers and which is rad yeah, yeah man but at the same time there's a small team that runs all of sullen a very small team of us that runs everything so to keep up with everything all the time you know, all these people, the 500 artists, you know, how they treat their loved ones or do they give back to the community? It's hard. You know, yeah. you can't sit there and, 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 and judge every single person you've ever worked with. You can't. Yeah. I say it all the time. You can, you know, build your reputation for 15 years and lose it in five minutes. Mm. Going back to what we were talking about mm -hmm. on here, you know, I yeah. think even podcasts, there's, there's different frames of mind. You know, I think a lot of the younger generation, they're totally the fuck it generation where they're putting everything out, you know, and you're yes. almost like, whoa, I can't believe you said that. Whoa, I can't believe you don't care. <laughs> they're like, fuck it. They're selfie in their whole life, you know? Yeah. Me, I'm a little bit more scared driving here. I'm like, all right, Jeremy, don't don't say anything that's going to ruin you guys. Don't fuck totally, it up. Totally. You know, I hope totally. Jeremiah doesn't ask me that tough question, you know, yeah, where, yeah, yeah, where yeah. I'm like, no, I don't want to answer that. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, it's like, shut yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. You pussy, go <laughs> do the podcast <laughs> do and have some fun with your friend. But cancel culture is such a real thing right True. now. And when you have a business where you 
that could be affected. Yeah. It makes sense, you know? Like, for me, I'm by myself. I don't work at a shop either, so I can say whatever the fuck I want. Who's right. going to cancel me? Right. You know? <laughs> like, but if you have partners and things of this nature, you never know what could happen, you yeah. know? Bigger. You guys got more on your plate than I do, you know? <laughs> yeah, but, and I'm always like, I mean, I know. I, I've, I've done it to, you know, you... And your mom, so then I'm like always like, yeah, do more, do a podcast, Jared, do this, yeah, do that, yeah, start yeah. a YouTube channel, you know, like but do you're it, such do a it, positive do it. dude, and you're always like um, pumping everybody up to do more, which I've always appreciated. Yeah, every time I've hung out with you somewhere, you're always saying. I'm stuff so like stoked that. on this right here. Like this is this oh, that's is great, cool, man. Hell yeah. yeah, you know. And I got inspired kind of by when you guys were doing it too. Even before you was uh, Joe Swanson, right? Was yeah, doing the yeah. one for a while, and that was really mm-hmm. cool too, you know. And so I'm like, yeah, I would love to do that, you know. And I'm taking little aspects of just watching all the other ones too, and because it's great that so many people are doing it, you know. And you got different aspects of people doing it, and yes. so I'm like, okay, I like this part about that one. I like this part about that one. I'll take this, take that, and. Just but this is for this is forever, you know. Like a word that's important to me is legacy. Yeah. You know, what are you leaving behind? So like, your mom telling those stories that need to be told. I'm sure they've been told, but maybe they were told in a magazine, and that magazine's falling apart somewhere now. You yes, know, like yes. there's a lot of stuff that you think you can Google and find it, but there's a lot of stuff that's hard to find. It, it could have been that magazine article that we read in the '90s. You can't find it now, you yeah. know. Whereas this right here in this digital world, this is this is forever. It lives on. It needs yeah. to be documented. Needs to be told. The youngsters coming up need to hear it. You know, like there's so many times where I get to be in a room, like I was telling you, with your the stories that your mom has told. You know, I'm just like, wow, that's fucking cool. It is to hear those old stories. They need to by be these, told. Yeah, they do. They and people want to hear them. They do. Yeah, people definitely want to hear it. You know, and I, I think it's really important for all that to live on, like you were saying, like. And I think you told me something like that before. Yeah, I'm pretty sure a lot of this stuff has come from you. Like you're like, yeah, it's not going to live like in the magazines anymore. It's going to come on and be here and then here. It's all yeah. about. It's life. all news to you, but it's it's new news yeah. to so many other people. Yeah, it's so neat, man, to see this new aspect of things, you know. And there's some people I wish I could have got in here before. It was like Rick, you know, yeah. and stuff, because he was right across the street. If I would have started this before that and got him to sit down and hear some of the stuff, I'm glad you guys did it on your mm-hmm. podcast, which was awesome. Robert was in my ear. He's like, hey, old man ain't going to last much longer. Let's get him on the podcast. And I was like, you're right. Let's do it. That's cool. I'm glad we did. Yeah. He told some cool stories that day. Yeah. We've kind of uh, we've kind of just have had our head down just kind of working, you know. I mean, of course, as a brand, it's our job, you know, to storytell. So, you know, doing, you know, our podcasts or, or, or having people down to Solon TV to tattoo or at our studio to tattoo or visiting or conventions, that's all been on, you know, been on, on, on uh, you know, halt. But um, but we're still staying busy. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Are you looking at, do you have any, like, conventions planned or anything now that they're starting to go back? Are you traveling? A little bit, a little yeah. bit. Um Let's see. What are we in right now? We're in October. Yeah. Um, I don't have anything till till January, you know. But oh, I know cool. convention season te- technically kind of dies down. November, yeah, I December. guess it originally does. Anyways, there's not much around now. Yeah, I got invited to one in Florida, but I, I said no. It's too close to, to Christmas. Um, but yeah, yeah, I want to. I want to start. I want to start get back at it. Yeah, yeah, because you were always doing so many, and then it's like yeah. all of a sudden now you're stuck home for a while. Well, COVID was supposed to. <laughs> The, before COVID hit, that was supposed to be my biggest year of traveling. Really? Know? Yeah, we were, yeah. we were going to do a 1010 show. We had a booth in Paris. I've always wanted to do that one. Yeah, and we had been talking about it for years, and we finally you know, got on. And then we were supposed to uh, go with Jess Yen and meet up with Horiyoshi to Japan, you know, and, wow. and that got canceled. Uh, we were supposed to do, well, London Convention again. I hadn't done that in like five years. So we had a year where we were so excited, and that all. And, that would have um, been great too. Wow. I don't know if you remember, but Tin Tin Show, he like he almost kept it going. Yes. Remember? So like, and then they like rescheduled it. He had to cancel yeah. like f- like five days yeah. before it went on. I mean, I remember I haven't. I don't go on Facebook much, but I know Facebook is good for this. You know, I <laughs> I, I think I wrote like a, um, you know. Got a booth uh, in Paris. Should we go or not? Yeah. Because COVID was new. It was just now hitting all the news waves. And it was like 50-50. That was probably 40 comments. Half of them were like, fuck it, you only live once. And half of them were like, no, man, you're going to get stuck there. Don't do it. Yeah. And that was the part. that, too. The quarantine part. Like, if you go there and you got to stay there for 14 days or 30 days or whatever new rule, this was all a new world of uncertainty. So we did, of course, said no. I mean, it got canceled. I'm glad we 
didn't go. If we totally. would have went and the convention gets canceled and then we're stuck there for 14 days with oh. no babysitters. Or it's some rules change here while you're there. Yeah. Because everything was so weak to Can't week. Can't come back for 30 days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'd be like, damn, because so many weird things like that were happening to people that were traveling. Yeah, now I've got oh. money getting wired to me to stay in some shitty hotel. Yeah, totally stuck. <laughs> and get fucking permission on your phone to go outside and shit. Yeah, that's, it's yeah. pros and cons, man. I yeah. mean, it's easy to lose your mind over all the craziness that's going on you know it that's is, why you talking about going to colorado like i like colorado i like somewhere where i mean i know we can do it here as well but i like you can get to nature pretty quick totally i like yeah. that uh the the pace slows down you know yeah. i mean i always stick up for californians because when people come here to visit us i always ask you know our international friends has everyone been nice you having a good experience and luckily usually they say yes but i also know that that L.A. and New York have a you know a, a reputation for being rude, and I'm like, it's not that they're rude; it's just they're stressed. Yeah. A lot of people here in California are working multiple jobs, trying to figure out. You know, they're not rude; they're just like, it's they're just busy. Yeah, they're based. like, got to get to work, got to got to figure out how to pay for this, got to get my side job, my hustle, and oh, I want to start this and start that. It's like, it is like you know, land of the dreams where you can you know, there's opportunities here where you can have opportunities to go after shit that you wouldn't in other small towns. But it's stressful to live here. It's yeah, expensive. There's got to be that know? balance. Yeah, yeah, you need to be able to get out. Sometimes some it feels shit. like the government is like against you. You know, they're, like they're, they're, they're wanting you to fail. So you're just mm. fighting that much harder. Totally. You know, but. Yeah. That is true, though, about the New York and L.A. thing. It's just so fast paced and yes. so crazy. And, you know, and I remember living in New York. It was just, yeah, like they just don't have time for bullshit. Right. Like, so if you're like. Oh, I, res da, I respect da. that sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're like, hey, order your fucking sandwich. Go. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, we ain't got time for you. Yes. You know, there's 10 other people behind you. You know, like, and there's that's kind of in a there's weird There's a time way. and place for small talk. And yeah. I told I was talking to my wife about this the other day. Like, I never wanted to be like that, that fast-talking businessman who turns into an asshole. But at the same time, I got a little bit of a pet peeve of uh, small talk on text. <laughs> yeah. You know, when someone texts you, hey, man, how's it going? It's going good. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> totally. Sometimes totally. that's what I'll be like, come on, I know you got a question for me. Get to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you that's know? funny, dude. Hell yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, because you're like, I got shit to do too, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's funny, man. It's hard. It's hard yeah, to live here. Yeah. Are you guys looking forward to anything coming up? I mean, you said you got some in January. Where are you going? Um, Philly. Philly. Philly show. Oh, Is yeah. it late January or early February? But anyways, um, yeah, we're going to go big at Philly again. Is that the... Um, Villain Arts. That's Villain Arts, oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, which I think I think it's the biggest convention in America. Is it really? I think so. Like numbers wise, booths wise, foot traffic. Oh wow. I think I think I think that's our biggest. That's crazy. Um and I thought it was interesting. Somebody broke it down for me. Um Philadelphia, because I remember the first time I remember one of the times I went to Manhattan, one of my best friends was living in Philadelphia. And I was in Manhattan having a good time and he calls me, he's like motherfucker why didn't you tell me you're in manhattan like i want to come visit you i'm yeah. like well you're in philadelphia i didn't know it was a 45 minute train ride yeah yeah yeah. i didn't realize it was like so two close. hour drive or something yeah, yeah so yeah, philly like, you, you you got that you got the the transit system so you're you know x amount of hours from washington dc from new york from baltimore you know like there's so many big cities around it that can get there easily yeah. um, california's so damn big that it yeah. just ruins that part over here. You know? Oh, yeah. It's more like Europe on that side. Like yes. where you could just be wherever yeah. in an hour or two. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's really interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. People come here. And I remember even when Ryan and I started Solon, um, I was a bartender on the end of the Newport Pier. So we'd get a lot of tourists coming in there. And so many people would come in just getting off the bus, bitching and complaining. They're like, I just got off the airplane and took a bus all the way here. Fuck that shit. You know, I'm like, yeah. oh, no, no, no. You don't want to take a bus. Yeah, what are you doing? Yeah. You're like, <laughs> you got to rent a car here. <laughs> yeah, you do. You don't want to use the trains yeah. and the bus. I mean, I'm not nothing against it, but I'm just saying, like, if you're a tourist, you know, trying to get around L.A., you're going to be real frustrated. Yeah, real our public on. transportation system is horrible. Oh, it's the here. worst. Yeah, it is the worst. You have you want to rent a car, you know? Yeah, like, and like, then you're still going to sit in traffic. So. <laughs> What's the song? Walking in L.A.? Nobody walks in L.A. Yeah, you know? yeah, no one does, dude. Everything's you can't really... 30 to 45 minutes away. <laughs> it is, man. Or every, what is it, the joke, too? Everybody always says everything's 20 minutes away, but it's, like, usually 45, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh, no, that's 20 minutes, not that way, but with traffic and everything, it's always 45. Yeah. You used to work down in Newport, huh? At yeah. the bar, yeah. that's how you crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. When, when did you guys start? 
um, so on. <clears throat> so we um, technically started it in 01, but we don't really count the first five years because we didn't know what the hell we were doing, you know? Like, we started it off our couch in downtown Huntington Beach, and first five years we were trying to find ourselves. Ryan was tattooing all of us on the side, but at the same time, even though a lot of, a lot of the art and the lettering had a tattoo look, you know, it was only Ryan doing the art. Ryan did all of it, and we were going after action sports a little bit more. You know, we had a skate team and some BMXers, some surfers, and and but we were struggling. You know, we were struggling. Mm-hmm. It's an oversaturated market. None of us are pro skaters. You know, or, especially at that time. Oh that yeah, shit was huge. Yeah. yeah, but those are the guys that inspired us. You know, totally. we we got inspired to start Solon because we grew up in Southern California, and you'd see the stickers pop up, and you'd see the new brands. You know, yeah. I mean, we we remember. You know, whether it's Black Flies or Hurley or Ruka, like we watch these brands from the beginning grow and you could almost like tell what new brands by looking at the street signs, you know, new stickers would pop up and they'd flood all the beaches with new stickers. And speaking of that, I remember your guys' sticker when it started popping up. Hell yeah. It was at the skull with the bandana, right? Oh, that was one of them. That was yeah. one of them in the beginning, right? Uh-huh, or uh-huh. Yeah. I totally remember that one starting to pop up around signs. I'm like, oh, what's that? That's a badass skull. Uh, you know? that, was a, that was a charcoal piece that Ryan did. That's and, cool, man. I and I remember um, so that shirt, I remember we got in the No Fear stores, and that was when No Fear was a mall shop. And we got in that shop, and um, they told us that that was the very first white shirt that was their best seller oh wow because it was you know it was like a bro shop <laughs> yeah, you know, it was yeah, all black yeah, t-shirts yeah. and they said that this is our very first white shirt that was the best seller wow what a trip yeah. that's really cool and then they went out of business and owed us a bunch of money <laughs> oh jesus <laughs> they did really yeah. oh that's horrible man yeah, yeah. well it's cool that you guys like ended up partnering up with like black flies later on you well know? that's, that's pretty neat yeah you know? that's full like circle full circle man that's really cool black flies are actually the brand that inspired us because when we were in high school there were some guys that worked at black flies that were in our went to school but they were the older guys they had all the hot chicks they had all the cool parties yeah, and yeah. one of my buddies brother his brother worked for black flies and he got like this black fly snowboard i was like that's so fucking cool so we were like oh you know like they inspired us to start soul and i think they had stickers before they had product as well we did the same thing we had stickers before we had any product and we just demolished from mexico all the way up the border out to the ie wherever we went we were throwing up stickers yeah that's the way um, to do it and and uh but I think that Ryan Ryan came from an old school apprenticeship, so I he was weary of going the tattoo route just because he knew how protected oh. it was. You know, he knew it just wasn't a walk in the park coming in the tattoo world, and you know, yeah, selling, yeah, selling. Yeah, you got to be kind of respectful of it. And, yeah, yeah, so it organically happened. Totally. Uh, but the first five years, you were running out of our apartment, not knowing what the hell. We were young, we were partying, we were, but still trying to find ourselves. And then, um, yeah, I mean, Nico is actually the, the the first the first guy that we worked with. Um, let's see how to go down. Nico Ryan wanted to get tattooed by Nico, and this was Nico was big locally, but he wasn't big, you know, internationally. Yeah, yeah, not yet. No. And uh, and Nico asked Ryan to print some shirts. He had some art he wanted to print, and then. I told Ryan, I was like, hey, see if see if we can put Solon on a few of them for us to wear. And Ryan asked Nico, hey, can we put Solon on the shirts? He's like, fuck it, put it on all of them. But the art was, um, was it was all Nico. It was, like, it was like his skull with the machine, and then it said Nico real big. Oh, I remember that shirt. Oh, yeah, we yeah, had, I had that forever. too, yeah. And then we put Solon real small on the back, which was kind of not done a lot either. You know, like the branding is usually the big part of the shirt right but it wasn't nico was the big part and that did well and then right around the same time ryan um was sitting down and drawing with tom berg up at socal tattoo him and tom berg did a couple shirts and then i remember ryan coming back to the office being like yeah there's this little dude there who's he gets down as well he's like i'm gonna go back and draw with him and that was carlos torres yeah so having carlos torres nico and tom berg as our first three artists was wasn't a bad start not at all. You know, and then I think... Uh, to to think, too, like, not to sidetrack to it, but that you guys all grew together. Well, I, that's I think, pretty neat. Yeah, I think that's... I think it was... Um, it was a partnership. I think it was good timing. I think good even, time, yeah. even like, the word tattoo artist was kind of new. You know, with Tattoo Artist Magazine. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Like, I felt like right around that time, which is probably, what, like, 15 years ago... Um, there was that, 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 I don't want to say fight or struggle, but like just tattoo art getting respected as art, yes, you know, yeah, and, and yeah. It, it was finally getting that, you know, and then we, 
you know, we're coming up and, and we're trying to do our thing, but we did already have a little bit of a name and we had t-shirts and we had a brand. So I think we were able to win over enough of these guys like, oh yeah, let's do some shirts, you know, and and then everyone was kind of, you know, striking gold. Like we all, we were all coming up together. Totally. And when well, they were growing too as artists. Absolutely. It was a so, back scratching thing. We we're helping each was, other out. Yeah. And then Ryan, I mean, Ryan's like designing, you know, some of their business cards and Ryan's always been a lettering guy. So he's doing lettering for them and he's helping them. You know, with their, you know, some of their self-help books or whatever it was. Ryan was always helping these guys out with the computer stuff. And and um, we just slowly went from three to five to ten. Like, I think wow. we were doing the Mesa show. And Sage was like, hey, Jack Rudy's doing the shirt. Can I have him come by? And we're like, oh, shit, Jack Rudy's coming by. You know, and then he comes by and five hours later after five hours of stories you know now yeah yeah now, yeah. <laughs> now, now jack's our friend and you know so we get a shirt going with jack and then um i remember meeting you know mark maloney and being intimidated mark's like any friend of jack's is a friend of mine kind of thing you know so it, it, that helped out you know having yeah. from the new guys to the intimidating ogs and <clears throat> like i said from three to five to ten to twenty and it just it was organic so there's no better way and for something to happen yeah. organically. And then once you get those kind of like okays too from the um, old school guys, that's really cool. Oh, you, you know, the ones it. like Jack and Mark and them are like, fuck yeah, we're, yes. let's do some shit. Or like, we're stoked on what you guys are doing. Just not that it totally matters, but it does. Oh. Right? Yeah, because then you don't have these guys like talking negatively about you. You know, they're on board too. They're like, well, mm -hmm. we like these guys. We like what they're doing. You know, they're not trying to just take our shit and run, you know, and which happens a lot in yeah. the business now you know it's all kinds of opportunists but um then you're like well what do you do you know what i mean and they're like oh well, i have like one tattoo I just want to do this. <laughs> you know but yeah well and the cool. fact like since ryan was tattooing for so long and i was getting tattooed by him like crazy sitting in the chair with him you know i kind of i guess learned a little bit of you know tattoo etiquette you know do's and don'ts yeah things to not talk about or talk about you know or whatever so ryan being my best friend my business partner and my tattooer um, I was a fan of you guys. Like I was engulfed in it. I was engulfed in the magazines. I can't draw with a shit. I'm not. I can't tattoo. I'm not trying to. But I was a fan. You That's know? cool. So I would. You know. That's almost like me and my best friend Vinny. He's like the same way. He's so engulfed in it too, because he grew up around me and my mom, and just went to all the conventions. You yeah. know, and you know, he's all about Tintin and these guys. And I know? love that. Yeah, it's really cool. You know. Yeah, he yeah, knows you guys it. Have a similar relationship, which was really neat. You yeah. know. Yeah. And and. At um, our family party, we had our niece's first birthday yesterday, but I had a good conversation with um She's a friend of a friend, older lady, but just sat down and started talking to her, and, and you could tell she knew business and she knew the clothing game a little bit, but she started talking about passion, you know, and, and she's like, I can tell you're still passionate about it. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. I am. Yeah, you got to be. And yeah. I think about that, like, you can't teach passion. I feel bad for people that aren't passionate about something. Totally. It mm -hmm. happens to a lot of artists, too. Not yeah, and I, I know not you... Not in every business, I guess, right? right? You can equate it to anything, you know? I see a lot of artists, like, get to this point, and then they're just, like, there the rest of their career. Mm -hmm. And that drives me nuts, personally. I'm like, fuck. Like, I see these kids ripping it, and I'm like, shit, I got a lot to learn. You yeah. know? <laughs> I'm like, fuck, I don't want to get complacent at all, yeah. you know? Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you see some, you know, do you, this a little bit. Yeah, you know? yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, your tattoos are so much better five years ago. But, you know, they're paying their bills. They're, they're, yeah, they're cruising. Yeah, that's fine. Totally. Some people just kind of, like, get stuck there, you know? Mm -hmm. But to see these like, people just pushing it, it makes you more passionate. And then you guys have to keep pushing it, too, to keep things going, you know? Keep it fresh. And <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I, <laughs> I, I feel so lucky, the fact that, I wake up every day passionate about this. I know Ryan wakes up every day passionate about it. Um, you know, like it's it's it's. I I don't I don't take it for granted. I know that we have something special. And even like Ryan doesn't like me talking about this, but we almost lost the business a few years ago. Um, I remember that time. Yeah, yeah, and 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 Ryan's like, if we don't find someone smarter than us, I'm just gonna go back to tattooing. I was like, dude, we can't. Like, we got people getting our logo tattooed on their face right now as we totally. speak you know you like are, yes. people are into you know like we got a uh, we got a strong fan base that's into what we're doing and they got our logo tattooed on their neck and their head and i was like and you had so much backing by that point too that people you know you had all these people behind you you know that were it would have been a bummer to see it go yeah we got ourselves you know our, our investor passed away 
he committed suicide. We didn't see it coming. And, um, you know, our, uh, our bank loan got pulled and cash flow got fucked up. And, and all of a sudden we were in, in a lot of debt. I remember walking into the store, the headquarters yeah. and being like, where yeah. is every where is everything Trust you know me. what i mean Those and then they're were, like oh you get we got to tell you what's going on you know oh, like, we were oh, trying shit. to keep a secret from everybody yeah, we yeah. were like uh, we were taking it on the chin and not wanting anyone to know about it and uh but yeah if you came by hq in those six months you knew something was um, up even our shelves were bare but but even at that time when we had we didn't have any product to sell because we couldn't print stuff because we were in debt um I remember Ryan telling me like our web traffic was still like more than ever. There were still people getting our logo tattooed on them. Like they didn't know what was going on yeah. and the, the, the brand was still strong. We just got ourselves in a rut. I need know? to get the logo tattooed on me. You should have Ryan do it. I should. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. I should have him do that, dude. It's dude. I mean, that, that, but stuff like yeah. that, you know, when we first started the brand, when you'd see other brands, them getting the logo tattooed on, we're like, whoa. Yeah. That'd be so cool if that happened, if someone totally. got their logo tattooed yeah, on. Yeah, And I'm never, like, a tre- like a trendy person. So if everybody's doing, like... So I think we even had this conversation one at a convention where, like, um, everybody has a soul shirt on. And I'm like, well, I'm going to wear something different. Yeah. Because I'm that dude, you know? I'm just yeah. the punk rock dude in the school. I'm not going to go along to get along kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So I'd wear something shirt. You're like, where's your soul shirt? I'm like, I- everybody's got one on, bro. Yeah. I got to wear something different. <laughs> you know, I wear that on my days off, you yeah. know, kind of thing of the convention, you know? And uh, so, like, yeah, with the tattoo thing, too, I'm like, ah, you know? Yeah. But I-, I think, yeah, I'm ready to get one just because of how important you guys are to me, you know, as oh, far as, cool. like, friends and stuff. I think that's more important than having it to be like everybody else you yeah. know what i mean well, when so, you got like, my yeah, yeah, yeah. too you can hide it you know you oh and look. i don't want to hide it i know you but know what i mean but yeah yeah a little yeah filler tattoo. but it's a great logo too you know it so much represents of everything like for any tattoo artist it's like oh yeah you get the brush you know it's mm-hmm. such a great thing to have too so. i think that's why i mean that's a big reason why it probably works too. i think so yeah i think yeah. that's why so many people it's get a, a tattoo logo yeah dude, there's people perfect. out there getting it tattooed on their face and they don't even follow us like hey wait a minute you got our logo on your face, but you don't follow us? Oh, oh that's trippy. Whatever. Yeah, wild. Yeah. I do see a lot of them, too, man. Wild ones. Yeah, yeah. right on the face. Yes. Like, God damn, that's oh, dedication. I, 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 uh, You're like, here's 500 bucks. Get stolen across. The, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's been <laughs> done. It's been done. I <laughs> yeah, mean, I yeah. remember um, sometimes if there's conventions that I, I, I couldn't make it to, you know, you go on Instagram and you can, whether you click the location or a hashtag, but, you know, it's kind of like chronological order. You can see what's going on there. But I remember I missed the London convention. And I was scrolling through to seeing what was happening there. And there was some dude with a, he had a lot of face tattoos, but he had a logo right between his eyes, right there. I screen captured it and sent it to some of the guys. Oh, I'm like, damn, man. look at this guy. That's pretty awesome, dude. Yeah. That's pretty awesome because, I mean, that's going to last the rest of those dudes' lives. You <laughs> yeah. know, that's pretty cool. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wouldn't do my face either, but <laughs> I not, get that. Yeah, yeah. I'm if I'm going to get your logo, it's going to go somewhere else. Eyes. Yeah, yeah. That's wild, dude. That's really cool. But I got to get it done. Yeah. I'd yeah. be stoked. Now I have it. to do it. I said it on air. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, yeah. Official. I'll come over there and do it, you know. Yeah, I mean, speaking of the new place, too, since you guys bounce back from the from that hard times of, like, almost losing everything, and then you guys bounce back, got a new building. You guys are killing it over there. It's a beautiful place to be in, too. How are you guys liking it over there? Yeah, same thing, pros and cons, you pros know. I mean, cons, we yeah. did... We joined a parent company where it houses like 15 different brands. Um, we miss having our own building, but at the same time, we love being in this new building. It's a beautiful building. You know, there's other brands that we can, you know, bounce ideas off. There's that friendly competition thing. Um, but at the same time, you know, sometimes we miss having our own building. Of course, building. of course, yeah. Uh, but I can see, a, yeah, and, but you've gotten to meet some cool people I've seen yes, through there, too, because absolutely. somebody like Rockstar has come through there, too, yeah. of like a, that for a different genre of people, you well, know what I mean? Which is uh, kind of cool. Jose Mangan is like my roommate, you know, yeah. he's downstairs, I'm upstairs. And <laughs> one of the brands, he was an ambassador. So they, they pretty much, I think bribed him into coming out from New York. They built him his own radio station, his own stage, his own green room, his own smoke room. And, and now as radio continues to die and streaming and digital is growing, like he's, he's become like the go-to for, whether it's uh, exclusive on a new song or, or an album release party. Of course, COVID ruined a lot of that. But yeah, yeah, dude. Jose's my boy. And, and any day I come in, you never know who he's going to have there. Yeah. And he's super, like me and him get along great. 
Um, I get him tattooed by some greats, totally. and he introduces me to some rock stars. And some of these rock stars are still my friends, you know? Like, yeah. So, or are they like childhood hero dudes? You're yeah. like, oh, yeah, I used to listen to that fucking guy. This is rad. Yeah. That's really cool. I've it's met not, some really cool people. That's a good cool bounce people. back, I noticed, too, you know? And I, I always sell it to people, too, like, because a lot of my fans, you know, or a lot of fans, I guess my clients are like metalheads, too, a lot of them. So I'm like, hey, just so you know, you guys listen to, you know, Sirius, right? Well, you can combo this together. Go to the Solon store. There's these things, and you never know who's going to be on the other side of the glass. You might see your dude yeah. on the other side getting interviewed. You yeah. know, so it's a bonus. Go buy some Solon clothing. And, and that, ha- that happened that. recently. One of your clients, um, I know every time he comes on, I know he's from out of state, and I know every time he comes to get tattooed by you, he goes and visits yes. us afterwards. Now, my wife has been working the store. She actually just quit a couple of weeks back, but um, she was working the store for the last couple of years. And... Uh, and he would always come in, and I, I remember, um, I don't know, it was a text me and you exchanged, but I was like, ah, oh, trying to figure out when to get on Jeremiah's podcast. But I told her this week, I was like, yeah, Sunday I'm going to do Jeremiah's podcast. She's like, yeah, yeah, I know. His client um, talked about it last time he was in there. Oh, funny. Yeah, 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 like, yeah that was like funny. He, he said yeah, something yeah. Like, like, Jeremiah says – have Jeremy text him to get on, you know, schedule a time or something like that. Yeah, he yeah. knew about it, you know. Yeah, they those uh, that family they've been coming out since the conventions have been down. The last two Octobers they've been just flying out to here. Oh, it's a number of them. Yeah, well, it's like him, his brother, and his wife. They all get tattooed. Now the kids are getting tattooed by me too, you know. But they would kind of meet me at all the Hell City tattoo conventions. Uh-huh. We hang out all weekend, and I pretty much tattoo them predominantly, you know, which was really cool. It just got to know them over like eight, ten years of just doing Hell Cities, and now they'll come here just because of covid and uh they airbnb to house like right in my neighborhood so i'm like walking over there every night i'm like oh cool i got some friends to hang out with right. here you know and uh but yeah and so every time they come they like head over there and they just That's buy cool. hundreds of dollars yeah. like they went twice this time i think they were like <laughs> yeah yeah they're like oh maybe they'll have some new stuff you well, know because they were here for two too. weeks yeah you know and they're like we'll go see if they have some more new stuff and then yeah. and it worked out yeah they even bought some stuff from the um I forgot what other company it is. It's not a, it's like a military. Uh, Howitzer. Yeah. yeah. They bought some stuff from them too, you know, yeah. which is cool. It just kind of, but they said they saw your wife there too. And I was like, oh, that's rad, you know? Yeah, Thanks yeah, for sending yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. I always try to tell people because sometimes people don't realize you're like two miles away from me. Oh, yeah. I'm like, no, they're right around the corner, dude. Yeah. Like, I tell, I tell people all it. the time, you know, yeah. like Jeremiah is right up the street. Rick's old shop right up the street. Yeah. You know, like. Even the, you know, Long Beach, all the Long Beach shops, your mom's shop. Totally. What's yeah. that? You know, 15, 20 15 minutes tops? 15, 20 minutes, yeah. It's not far at all, man. Yeah, there's a good little, and then now you got Ravens down there, too. So mm-hmm. there's a couple spots people can hit in Long Beach and get, like, the whole tattoo thing, too, which mm-hmm. is cool. You know, you get the modern dudes over at Carlos's, and then you can go see some tradition over in, you know, my mom's. Which yeah, is I didn't cool. know if, like, Carlos's shop, I don't know if, 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 if it's welcoming to just anyone. Like, if anyone can just either. kind of pop, pop in and enjoy the art, you know, yeah. but I know... I know your mom's shop is, so is. I always tell people. I, yeah, like, I know for a little while it wasn't because of the whole COVID thing, too, because uh, they were like appointment only, nobody else with you, yeah. which was kind of what I was doing, too, during COVID. Yeah, just, yeah. just come by yourself. Uh-huh. You know, Luckily, I was low-key here, too. Like, um, you know, A lot of the time, she had to be shut down for like a year mm. over there. They got hit hard uh, during that, yeah, all, all the L.A. shops. But some shops, you know, obviously were backdooring it you yeah. know what i mean luckily here it was re- easy for me to do it yeah that was like one of the times i was like god damn i'm so glad i'm by myself Absolutely. <laughs> you know like it's that won't affect me you know and after i got over the first few months i was like okay i think i can do this just keep it low pro you know and I'm one person stoked. in here yeah yeah it was cool you know but yeah there's a lot of shops right here people could just visit you know have you been over to rick's at all recently? no i haven't How, yeah. what do they do to it i haven't been in there either i don't know yeah. Um, do they do? No, I don't just think someone it looks else much is different. running it now, you know. Um, so I just wasn't sure if you guys like uh-huh. go over there or anything, you know. Um, I know somebody else is running it now. Yeah, um, I mean Rick was a, a dear friend of ours, and he would always yeah. pop in. You know, he was one of those guys just popping unexpectedly all the time. But like I said, I'm I'm such a fan. I you know Rick would come sit in my office and tell stories. me stories for hours. Yeah, you know, and sometimes at the point where you're like. Oh, trust shit, me. bro! I got I got to pick up my daughter. Yeah. You know, I remember that a couple of situations yeah. too. Where I'm well, like, and the wives know. You know, it's like, sorry, baby. You know, you, you got to say Rick's here. Yes. Or something, you know, like yes. <laughs> old, there's a old timer here. Yeah, which means stories are coming. You don't want to leave these stories either because no. they're compelling. You know, like, yeah. Uh, I'll be missing my son's basketball practice and shit or something just yeah, because yeah, 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 he's yeah. engulfed. You know, I'm engulfed in these stories. But yeah. at the same time, like I I, I love it. It would have been cool to 
get some of the, his stories down to you. I yeah. wonder, if, is there anything out there like that? A book or anything? With the, has anybody got any records of some kind of his stuff? I, I mean, don't know, about, there, I don't yeah. know about no book. Yeah, well, I definitely no book yet, I guess. But I mean, there's got to be somebody that's kind of has like a collection of his stories we could like put out or something. You know, like Lyle has so much out there. Yeah. That when he passes, I know that there's a lot of stuff out there. You know, and yeah. he was always interesting like that too to talk to. You. Yeah. Because he always had the shit ton of stories you know like he was so awesome man i think I, it's, it's, it's it's like about your team though you know i think maybe lyle had more help he did yeah you know? yeah 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 when you get when you get some people helping you out totally that makes sense but that's going back to this that's why this is so cool yeah i think it's great and so many tattoo artists are doing it now and that's really cool too to see like these different groups of artists and they're all doing it in different ways which is neat you know so like I think it's great that everybody's doing it. You know, I see some Euro- should. European artists are doing it too. And I'm like, yeah, that's rad. You know, get everybody's story down. Mm-hmm. It's really important. It's crazy that this became a thing though. Like, you know, 10 years ago, would you ever thought you would have been like sitting around listening to like a Joe Rogan podcast for two, three hours? You know what I mean? But like- <laughs> now with, you know, with AirPods and everything, like I, I heard someone talking about it, you know, this three hour conversation, which is new you know mm-hmm. long form format whatever they call it it's fairly new but it's something you can listen to while you're doing other stuff while you're doing the dishes you know while you're while you're totally catching up on emails you know um but it's so much better like you really get to know somebody not everyone has two hours to listen to it but if it's playing in the background it's just yeah playing in the background you're still doing other stuff yeah or you get 20 minute segments of it in your car or whatever yeah, yeah it's great i mean just the whole thing alone opened up my eyes to so many new things you know just listen to the, these different podcasts and the different people on there i'm like damn like mm-hmm. just opened up a whole new world of just like listening to this person or that person scientists historians mm-hmm. whatever you know and, and so hopefully it it's almost like uh you know you mentioned earlier that you consider yourself a little bit of an introvert you know like mm-hmm. It gets your feet wet, you know? Yeah. You do it and then you realize, Oh, that's not so bad. Let's do another one. Oh, that's yeah. not so bad. Maybe next thing you know, you're you're doing uh, you know, like who is it? Bill Burr, he does one by himself. I know. How the hell does he do that? He don't yeah, even have yeah. guests. Yeah, I know, which is so awesome. And sometimes I'm I'm a little bit envious of people that aren't scared to put themselves out there. Because yes. even though like I've like I preach it and I tell people do it, do it, I'm not necessarily doing it, you know? Like yeah. um but even just sitting here talking to your phone, like the younger generation, you know, like this TikTok generation, when we first got on TikTok, you know, like I know it's a craze. I know it's big. I know as a marketing guy, we need to get on there, but I would get on there and I just, my old ass wouldn't get it. I'm like, it's just totally. nothing but narcissism. It's, it's all these kids dancing or singing or, 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 or talking, pretending like they're an actor of their favorite movie part, but they're not actually creating the movie part or creating the song they're singing someone else's song so i at first i was like trying to wrap my head around it and i just saw it as so narcissistic you know like but at the same time um you know that makes sense yeah yeah you got to have that personality to to say fuck it and just put it out there you know yeah and then see all the hate comments come your way you know and be okay with that well like joe rogan says joe he's like don't don't read read them yeah don't read them i I remember carrie king from slayer told me that too really yeah like when the guitar player died from Slayer. A bunch of people were talking shit about him, you know, at this at the funeral, saying that he wasn't crying. And he's like, I kn- knew that Jeff was dying for like two weeks and grieved for two weeks. And just because I wasn't crying at the funeral, people don't know what I went through before that. Right. And I was like, wow, that's interesting. He's like, and then one day I was watching this Jägermeister commercial I'm in on YouTube. And he's like, I never do this, but I scrolled down below to see the comments and he's like that was the biggest mistake I ever made he's like never read the comments I was like oh crazy and then yeah Joe Rogan preaches that all the time and I do sometimes just because a lot of the comments on my page now are pretty positive you know luckily I'm you know and I when they are negative sometimes I do you know it does it does hurt sometimes well yeah you know? some things like, it's not just gonna you know, ruin your day or your week, your but month or year, yeah, something yeah. That you'll remember forever. But sometimes I'll get into with somebody on there about something stupid, and it fucks me up the whole rest of the day. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm like, damn, this just is really weird to put yourself out there like that. You know? Yeah, my older age, like, uh, like you know, the conversation I was telling you about my wife earlier. You know, like I'm, I'm trying to just not care so much. Just totally. You know, even though you want to care, of course we all care. Yeah. But at the same time, like, you need to just not sweat the small stuff. Totally. Breathe through it. You know, like. Especially like a big company like you guys have that like has such a big reach, yeah. you're gonna have 
just idiots. Ryan's a lot better at it. You know, Ryan, there's so many there's so many stories that I'll get heated about and I'll tell Ryan and he don't care. And you know, but he, his philosophy is is it going to bother you a year from now? If it's something that's going to bother you a year from now, then maybe it's important. But if you're not going to care about it a year from now, then don't care about it now. Yeah, yeah. And I'm getting, I'm getting better at it, you know, but I'm envious of people that really don't care. But at the same time, some of them know. Like, dude, why'd you put that out there? There's some people, you know, on these social media platforms and, and, and like, what are you doing? Like, why are you putting yourself out there? You're a fool. But then you'll meet them face to face and that's not, that's not them. Yes. They're almost putting on an act. And that that's like too. this new generation as well. Yeah, yeah. A lot of it's just trolls. Yeah. A lot of it's just trolls yeah. on there just starting shit for the fun of it. Yeah. I have friends that are totally into that. Like, that shit does, does do not too. phase them. They'll just open a beer. They like it. They like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like getting it, people heated. And, and like, then if you, have, if you have a good enough following... If someone talks shit, your fans will usually stick up for in. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you got them arguing, and that picks up the algorithm because yeah. you got people arguing for you on Yeah, that. but it's just one of those <laughs> things, man. You got to stay away from just, okay, just delete the comment and go if you yeah. can, you know, just delete the bad comment and just. But then at the same time, I've been told that that's a no no. Um, and like. To leave that shit. Proper etiquette, social media etiquette, you're supposed to address it and leave it because deleting it could. Um, could hurt you more in the end oh really wow and there are still you know i deleted a comment yesterday i'm trying to remember what it was oh someone said don't buy from this brand i still haven't got my box uh my order from that i ordered 10 weeks ago and i know that that's not us like our customer service is pretty on it and our and our orders are going out 48 hours tops if there's a re if you haven't got it in a week email us and there's a reason why you haven't got it either the yeah. address pulled up fraud or you know so that one i could have argued with him been like no that's not us but i just i just deleted it totally. but most of the time um i've been told don't ever delete negative comments address them or, or 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 leave them be okay you know and i don't necessarily know the, the reason behind all of it and i'm sure there's an argument it will make sense because of all social media is like built on the fight like they yeah or the negative momentum yeah, if you if you momentum. delete it then they can come back and be like Oh, see, these guys suck. I, I told him my, the, my customer service is bad, and instead of fixing it, they deleted my comment. Look, at I got the screen capture. I posted it 15 yeah, minutes ago. Yeah. And now you even look like more of a schmuck because you deleted their complaint. <laughs> totally. I get it. I don't yeah, know. it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah, the argument thing does drive traffic for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, but get in there and do it. But sometimes I'm just like, I just don't want this negative shit on my page. Or like, you know, or the pile on too. Like, yeah. you know, I, I got into it with some, some girl on um, one of my pictures not too long ago on there and she was just outright wrong about everything you know and then the pile on comes and then at first i was like nice about it but then she just like completely snapped on me and i'm like on one of your tattoos yeah yeah just saying that i copied it straight from giger and i'm like uh, um, no i didn't actually uh this one i drew on freehand and i and i go yeah it shows that you follow me so you would know that you saw the you know I posted the video of me drawing this on freehand. Yes, it's inspired by. Most people know most of my work's inspired by him. But mm-hmm. anytime I do one of his paintings, like I'll tag or put credit, you know. And she's like, "It's bullshit. I have the painting." And just starting to call me out. I'm like, "Prove it." <laughs> you know what I mean? And then she just kept going and going, dude. And I'm like, man, I feel like I'm dealing with, like, you know. And so then I started saying mean things. <laughs> and then I felt bad the next day, you know, because just from <laughs> from you know because then I troll this girl's page. And yeah. then I like find things to dig on her at. Yeah. And she seemed a little bit unstable. And I said something that maybe I shouldn't have. And the next morning I was like, fuck, I would have hated if somebody said that to my daughter and maybe pushed her over the edge. You know what I mean? So I was like, fuck, you know? And so I just deleted the whole <laughs> the whole thread of it. Was you she know? young was she younger? She was younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just these keyboard warrior yeah. tactics, you know. I was like, if you would and I told her straight out, like if you would have just been nice and asked me about it, like, you know, I would have just been cool but you like came out the gate just like attacking me calling me stealing all this shit like that i'm stealing artwork and i'm like fuck you follow me i don't follow you right <laughs> you know like it was just funny and then when people start piling on i'm like okay just delete it you yeah. know it's fun for a minute but then i was like okay yeah because that starts that negative energy thing and i'm yeah, like well, i don't like, want that bad karma for sure you know and, you, and at the same time it's your page you can do what you want yeah 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 but i could see like if you just let it go and the pile on keeps happening yeah. it just gives you more traction in the, the social media world you know and people yeah. are like oh yeah that's cool yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. do you want it do you need it you know like yeah yeah for for 
you know, going back to what we were talking about, some of these youngsters that are hungry, you know, like you've built something. Your your credibility is there. You got a beautiful shop, business is good, you're in paradise, you know. But some of these other people, they're trying to come up, you know, like there's some tattooers out there that I've seen them post maybe twice in the last year. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Are they that busy? They don't need to post anymore? You or know, they just, good for them. Yeah, I wonder if they're that busy or they're just so over social media because I've been there too. Like, where I'm like, fuck, I just need a break. Totally. Like, just get off of it. Like, like Josh Duffy. I was He's just only posted him a up. couple times in the yeah, last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he got on one time and I'm like, there's my concho. You yeah. know? And I'm like, all of a sudden, nothing again for yeah. six months. And I guess for him, he is busy enough to do that. You know, like if Carlos just shut down his page, he's going to be fine, you know. Uh-huh. Not shut it down, but just not post for a while. And uh, But, yeah, other people are, like, trying so hard, you know, that you're like, damn, you post five times a day, bro. I'm fucking mm-hmm. over you taking up my feed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and that's a problem. Like, and I get what they're doing, but some people just overdo it to me, you know. And I'm yes. like, damn. But, that's us. We're posting all day, every day. But you guys are a business, which makes sense, you yeah. know. And you have so much content, which is great. You guys can pull from everywhere. Yeah, I mean. You guys can yeah. pull from everywhere. You know what I mean? Because you're pulling from artists that support you, yes. but then you're, you know, then you got the clothing shots. Very fortunate got, when it comes to storytelling. Like, they, there's a lot of so brands. Much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're like, I, I know I need to post, but I don't know what to post. And yeah. For me, I'm just like, oh man, we're lucky there. Yeah. We have so many personalities. That's really from, cool too. From, from the artists, you know, tattoo culture and history, you know, to uh, you know even other personalities that we're working with. You yeah. know, I mean, we don't we don't sponsor athletes but you know if someone's got a, a, a badass sleeve and they're jumping out of airplanes you know who cares yeah, yeah. that's 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 where the you know Fuck we yeah, did a video is. recently where these dudes jumped out you know jump yeah, yeah no yeah. they jumped out of a hot air balloon yeah. wearing a soul shirt yeah you know? that's so awesome yeah yeah that's cool you gotta post that you gotta share it's all traction yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> for you guys that you guys have to do that you know what i mean We're i think most artists do too like just to stay relevant stay busy but yeah it's it's weird now like how the younger artists use social media like the stories, everything's just like, you know, um, some people are just full on into it, you know, like yeah. it's, it's pretty trippy. Like, but at the same time, Duffy not posting right now, makes me a little bit proud of him too. Yes. Like good for you. Fucking a. Yeah. You don't even have to. Fucking I don't have those balls yet. Yeah. 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 You don't I'm like, dude, social media. Yeah, you're doing yeah, so good. Yeah. Totally. You know, yeah. not to say there, like you said, there's other people that are doing just fine. They're still posting a few times a week and they maybe don't have to, but whatever. Yeah, like I yeah. still, it's, it's still a little bit of like, good for you. You don't, yeah. even, you don't even have to for deal me, with like, this shit. Totally. It's for me. It's like <laughs> discipline. Can you just post and go? Yes. Can I just post and get the fuck off? And, and you're go? a business owner. So there's <laughs> yeah, a lot of people yeah. that are going to be telling you, oh, you're not doing your job as a good business owner. If you're yeah. not posting every day or at least a few times a totally. week. And it's hard like to just not scroll through. Mm. And but just you can just be like, like Suck it, dude. Yeah, I'm yeah, doing just yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, and I noticed too, like when I post personal shit, obviously my page page starts to like, like that's weird. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like it's weird that I'll post like a hundred tattoos in a row, and then I post a picture of my kid. People just come out of the fucking woodworks yeah. to comment on it, and yeah. I'm like, well, where the fuck have all of you been? Yeah, especially other tattoo artists. It was just a weird thing in itself yeah. that um, a lot of other artists won't comment on other artists' page. Yeah. That's a weird, like, underlining kind of thing I notice, too, a lot. Like, um, just not giving credit at all to anybody else. Yeah, they just they see it, but they ain't liking yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, but if I post a picture of my kid, all of a sudden they're coming. So I'm like, oh, I know you're there. Yeah, you now, you're getting, now you're getting high fives because you're posting family. But this new age of seeing behind the scenes is what makes, you know, it big now. Like, you mm-hmm. know, just posting good tattoos isn't going to be enough. They want to see... A lot of shit, you know. They want to mm-hmm. see you draw it on. They want to see your home life. You know, it's like a, everything's a reality show now. Mm-hmm. So if you put more out there, you're gonna get more back. You know, it's, that's it's why weird, uh, you know? Snapchat and TikTok, I think, blew up because, especially Snapchat, that's that's like the ultimate, um, you know, behind the scenes. You know, yes. like well, well, Instagram has a story feed now too. But you know, if you got some celebrity laying in bed talking to you, you know, going live or story feed or whatever. Does it get any more intimate than that? You're practically totally. laying in bed with them. Yes, yes. You know That's what, what I mean? It is. Yeah, you're practically laying in bed. You're practically laying yeah, in bed yeah. with them. That didn't used to. That didn't used to happen. Uh, yeah. You know, like uh, oh, that's true. I'm pretty excited. I'm getting tattooed by Corey Miller on Tuesday. Oh, are you really? That's yeah, weird. Because yeah. I brought him up earlier about he told me about but the his, Barba hater thing. His yeah. page. <laughs> you, he's um. I don't know if he's in a new band, but. He's not posting a lot of tattoos anymore. He's posting like mm-hmm. show flyers and stuff like that. 
Um, and you have to scroll down a little bit to see a tattoo. I'm like, well, good for you. You yeah, know, and like yeah. when I first emailed him, his assistant, had, you know, said he's booked out till I think February. I'm like, well, he's busy. That's cool. Hell yeah. What I are you going to get I, done? I dropped him a text message. Oh, there you go. You got to take I'm going to use a little poll here. Yeah, I yeah, did. Yeah, I, did. Yeah, I was yeah. like, hey, if you get any cancellations, I'm your guy. Totally. And, uh, and I, I'm stoked because within five minutes I got, he's like, oh, sorry. Yeah, I got something a little busy. LOL. He's like, I'll, I'll talk to her and get you in sooner. Five minutes later, I got an email saying, how's Tuesday at, at Fuck six? Yeah. I was like, yes. Oh, shit. Um, I'm, I'm getting a rose. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing a, a rose over here. And then um, whether he wants to do it or not, um, but I want to do like as small, as small as possible without it being too small. But like stacked kind of old English. I want to get sorry, mom. Oh, sorry, yeah, mom, yeah, with, with yeah, a rose yeah, right yeah, there, right on the neck. Yeah, there you yeah. Go. That's cool, dude. Hell yeah! What a great dude to get. I only have one over here. I was gonna star. say, yeah. I think, yeah, nothing on the other side. No, just the back too. You just have the ear, huh? Yeah. Well, when I when the I ears. went neck finally, and you know, I almost got a full body suit. So you know, this was one of my last. Mm-hmm. But it's it's like one of my favorite tattoos, you know, like the ones that you are visible. Yeah. You know, when you're getting ready in the morning, you're like, oh, that's badass, you know. So, and that, this was a couple years ago. Yeah, it sucks when most of your best work's like under your shirt, you know. Like, yeah. That sucks. Yeah. You know, you're like, I want to show it off, you know, but it, yeah, it, it's for me. <laughs> that's cool. I, I felt like I'm at the point. It's like because the neck, um, that took a lot of thinking, you know. Like, I was like, well, well, it's here, you know, and. Well, the whole job stopper thing, you know, is Solon going to last, you know, like, am I going to be screwed? But five years ago, just only oh, in five years alone, that's already changed a lot. It know? has, yeah. Like you see people doing all I try to of coach things. kids about that, though, still. You know, I get these 19-year-old kids come in and want to hand, necks. I'm like, dude, just give They'll them get some mad time. At you. Yeah, they do. Like, and I'm trying to give them all the scenarios to think about. I'm like, well, what do you do? Oh, you're in school? What do I, you think? I learned you know, the hard way. Like, I, um... I hopped on our Instagram and I posted a neck tattoo and and I worded it saying I, I forget exactly how I worded it, but I pretty much said, you know, but don't don't go getting your neck tattooed unless the rest of your body is tattooed first or something like that. And it backfired. I had so many people pissed off. Just like, I'm so sick of you guys telling me where and when I can't get tattooed. Like, all these youngsters were so pissed off that I was trying to school them to not go for their neck first. Yeah. It it, it got so bad, I stopped reading the comments because it was giving me anxiety. (laughs) I was like, whoa. Yeah. All right, well, you guys can all be pissed. I thought, I felt like I did my part. But yeah, the younger generation, they don't agree with that. And they don't give a shit. Well, it makes sense. You know, every generation wants to outdo the next one. So it's like, Tattoos used to kind of just be here and there, and then it's like sleeves. Mm-hmm. The next, and then now it's like, no, we want them here, and that makes yeah. sense. The kids are like, don't tell us what to do. Yeah. Well, okay. Because they'll have two tattoos. It's yeah. a small one here and a small one on their hand. Cool. And yeah, they don't, they yeah. don't want to hear about the rules. Totally. Yeah, and I get it. We don't want rules, right? We kind of tattoo artists. We want to be with rules or anything, but we're. I guess we're just trying to look out for you, the older generation. Like, hey, man, you know, you want them to follow the rules. Yeah. You want those rules to stick. You do. You know, but then at the same bit. time, the older generation's always complaining about the younger generation always. and vice versa. Yeah. yeah. You know, that my, is a music, like Bill Burr would say. You know what totally, I mean? Totally. That is a music. My 14 year old, <laughs> um, he's already bashing the younger generation. Yes. You know, yeah, like he's, yeah. he's, he's Gen Z and he's talking about the generation before them. I, I um, What's it called? I almost want to say legacy. It's a powerful word, legacy generation or something. Like that. Really? But he's like, oh, this these younger generations, they're the iPad generation. The parents just give them an iPad. And I just want to be like, son, you had an iPad when you were a baby too, practically. Yeah. iPads have been around, you know. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, the, the, the older generation's always bashing the younger totally, generation. Totally, totally. And that always happens, you know, as yes. an old school artist to, you know, my mom's generation, you know. Absolutely. You're doing that all wrong. And then, uh, you know, the Nico got told a bunch of times that yeah. he's doing it wrong, yeah. you know, when he started doing color portraits. And it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, it's just it's just weird, you know, how they all do that. And I don't want to be grumpy uncle, you know. No, I don't totally. want to be the grumpy uncle saying, yeah, you kids. Totally. So I try to keep my ear to the street. I try to stay youthful. I try to keep my, you know, uh, hearing out the younger generations and being an observer. Yes. Um, but at the same time, like, yeah, it is frustrating when yeah. these guys come in and get a neck tattoo and that's all they got. And yeah, I heard I'll, it. I'll give them my piece, you know, and if they still want to do it, cool. But I'll be like, just think about it for a while. You know, that'll be your next session or whatever for your hand or something when I'm doing a thing. So 
just give it some thought. You're not in a job yet, you mm-hmm. know, like that is a problem. I'm like, I still get sometimes where I don't want to show my hand tattoos, you know, like if I'm going to rent a house yes, or whatever, like dealing with something with my daughter's school, yes, you know, I'll wear a flannel when it's a hundred degrees outside and I'm like tucking my hands into my flannel and I shouldn't be that way. It's but meeting your kids, teachers or principal. Yes. It's uh, doctors. I forget them tattooed except teachers, doctor's office. And yeah, when you're applying like, for something, a house something or something like that, yeah, you know, because yeah. that can make all the difference, you know, of them oh, being like, like standing like this. Oh, really interesting. Or totally. if I'm, you know, parent teacher conference, my hands are under the table with yeah. a flannel for sure. You, you don't want your kid to be affected by, you know, like any judgment, mm-hmm. which I had a lot of growing up with tattooed parents. Oh, yeah. You know, my teachers would say shit. I bet. And then it was like, oh, I go home and tell my parents, and then they get all pissed, come in and start some big old fucking thing at the school, you know? Yeah. And it's all like, so I don't want my kid to have that effect either, even though they're more accepted now, you know? But if I can't rent this house or something because I got hand tattoos, that's a fucking bummer, it's you know? It's the truth, though. Yeah, it's just the truth. Yeah, yeah. If you're any kind of situation like that, it's just a bummer, you know? So I just explain those type of things to people when they want to get it done. Just like, hey, you don't know what scenario you're going to be in that. You might want to hide it. <laughs> That's why I went right side of my neck because I thought if I get pulled over. Oh, shit. I yeah. didn't want my left side done, so I got my ear, my sideburn, and my neck on my right side. So if I get pulled over, I look all clean cut on this side. <laughs> and then I get, I get pulled over right here on Westminster recently for speeding. Yeah, yeah. He comes up to the right side. Yeah, yeah. Now they come up to the other side a yeah. lot of the times. Yeah. Well, I was like, son of a bitch. Did this, this is yeah, not yeah. This that that works for funny. me. But now they're so tattooed to the cops that it's not as big of a deal either. Oh, so yeah. that's cool too, you know. But that I is actually funny. Got, I actually got lucky. I, I somehow schmoozed him into letting me um, – I was just honest with him. I, I was going to meet my painter at the house. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm, I got painters in my house. I'm totally late. I apologize. I drive up and down this road all day, every day. And, uh, and my, my insurance, even though it, was, it wasn't expired, but the paper that I showed him was expired. Oh, yeah. And he's yeah. like, I'll tell you what. He's like, you're, you said your insurance doesn't expire? I go, no. He's like, well, I'll give you a fix-it ticket. You know, go show, the, show your non-expired insurance and you'll have to pay 25 bucks oh yeah, i got a warning shit that's awesome dude with neck tattoos fuck yeah that's awesome dude <laughs> i got out of one recently that was cool and the only reason why i got out of it was because his name was jeremiah too no shit and he's like look i'll let you go since you got the same name <laughs> i was like fuck it and it was a pretty major one i was like driving through uh i don't know how major it was but i was camping for five days and i had and when i'm camping out in the middle of nowhere i always have my gun and so when I got pulled over first, um, my gun was still in my center console. Th- this might be a little white privilege You know what with I mean? The but cli- with the clip in it? <laughs> with the, the clip right next to it loaded. Oh, okay. You know, it wasn't in it, but oh, yeah, that's the guy's like, you know, let me get your registration. I'm so tired. I've been up all fucking night. I just opened the middle, and I'm like, here you go. And I don't even see it. And he goes, you Oh, got he a- saw it? Yeah, and he goes, you got a gun? And I'm like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? And I'm like, on the freeway. Yeah. He got me for speeding and shit, but he was just like... I was like, dude, I've been camping, as you can see. I'm like, fucking, you know, and bears and shit out there, dude. Yeah. I just fucking have this always right here, you know, because you never know. And yeah. uh, I just got up this morning from camp and just started driving. I'm so sorry, you know. And he what was did he like, say? And he was totally cool. He was like, all right, you know, and, but don't be speeding in the work zone anymore. I don't know if it's like that in Nevada. It's not as big of a deal because I was in kind of outside of Vegas, you know, but... He's like, yeah, my name's Jeremiah, too, so I'll let you go. And I was like, fuck, yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, and I went to go, like, fist pump him, and it was, like, middle of COVID. So he's just like, yeah, cool. He gives me, like, a thumbs up, and that was it, you know? But I was like, thanks, bro. <laughs> but, yeah. I guess I, <laughs> Yeah, I was scored, too. But, yeah, yeah. I always get worried about those situations, man, getting pulled over, too, with tattoos. But Exactly. Back well, in the there day, was time. I remember um, what tattoo was visible. I was super young, early 20s, a, a kid. But he pulled me out of the car and talking gang talk, you know, what gang you in and this and that. And I'm like, for real? Yeah. You know, I'm a scrawny, skinny redhead with a couple tattoos, you know, showing. And um, and he was a punk. Like, he was an asshole. Uh, that yes, can happen, too. That shit sucks, yeah. But I yeah. also think that's – anything can happen. Totally. But I think that's slowing down. I think yeah. people aren't quick to judge. They can see if you got good tattoos or prison tattoos. Yeah, yeah. That's why I have, like, a 13 on the back of my neck with, like um, – snake eyes dice and like a black cat and i went to jail for something stupid like driving on a suspended license 
and then they're like, oh, you got a dragon on your arm. Yeah. You and the heroine. Yeah. You know, the black dragon. You chasing the dragon. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you guys are fucking nuts. Yeah. Like, chill out, you know? And then it's like, then tattoos. when they got me uh, for, you know, uh, from behind searching me, oh, 13, what gang you from? You know? And I'm like, you can't see that it's pink. Like, it's like a pink 13 and like, there's a black cat. I'm like, it's bad luck, bro. Like, chill out. Right. You know? Like, there's different meanings for everything, you know? Mm-hmm. It's just funny. Like, so quick to judge, yeah. you know? But I'm like, but yeah, I was just young too and getting in trouble. But so I get it. I was in jail already, but still. Yeah. Gangster. <laughs> yeah, that's funny, right? <laughs> yeah. It is crazy too to see how much you've filled out look over the years, dude. You guys got that gym in your studio now. Like you're saying scrawny redheaded kid. But uh, dude, I, I, you're in great shape now, man. I, 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 it's I awesome. say it's my, my midlife crisis. But you've seen my office. My office overlooks our gym. We got a work so gym. Rad. So there's no excuse. But, um, but yeah, I got into it. I'm pumped. I'm just. Fuck yeah. You get know, healthy, you get in man. your 40s, you start realizing, all right, this this, this shit ain't going to last forever. <laughs> yeah. I want to try to add, you know, add days on to my life. And, and you know, being a business owner, too, you know, sometimes, like, um, I remember uh, I remember Jack Rudy telling me, he's like, I work out so that I don't have to fight. Yeah, you know? that's and I, cool. He's like, I always want to have some size, you know, so they don't want to fuck with me. Yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. I, I, I yeah. agree. You know, it does keep that away. A I don't bit. mind. I don't <laughs> mind being a little. Uh, I, I don't mind being the big one of the bigger guys in the yeah, room. You yeah, yeah, totally. That's yeah. awesome, man. But yeah, yeah, I've been thinking that too. Like, I was like, fuck, in my forties now, starting to feel shit. I'm like, I need to yes. start fucking getting healthier, you know. And then I'll smoke a little weed, and then I'm like, oh, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that sucks too. Well, yeah, but you, if you if you spin it uh, well enough, like sometimes smoking weed before the gym. I've heard that too. Out. Some people are really into that. You dial, yeah. you get it dialed in, you know. Like, of mm-hmm. course, it's easy to throw your feet up and relax and, and, and enjoy, you know. It's but, always easier to do not do anything. But at the same time, to take a hit right before going in the gym, I don't do it at work, but I've done it in the past at other gyms. Um, you'll get in there and you get in the zone, you oh, know. That's like cool. you, you like feel it more. You feel what? Okay, if you're doing chest, you're like, okay, I feel it's this part of the chest, and you like can focus in on it. Like, oh, that's true. That works as well, you know. I that's- know. Schwarzenegger, you know, he used to talk about it. He smoked before That's working right, out. That's right, dude. And uh, he would have a beer before working out. That's right. This old movie, right? He'd be puffing mm-hmm. giants in there. And everybody's like, whoa, look at this yeah. guy. He'd talk about it. I don't know. Like, opened up your blood vessels more for a better pump or something like that. Same with the beer. He would drink a beer before working out because, like, the yeast something about opening up your blood and it help your pump or something i don't know yeah that's a trip man. i don't remember yeah but. yeah yeah and speaking of jack too i want to get him in here man yeah, yeah i gotta get him here soon too. jack's one i tell him i'm like you need a podcast yeah he would be amazing yes. yeah yeah and you know so many people too that'd be awesome yeah, yeah. i'm gonna hit him up soon to try to get him in here that'd be absolutely rad. you should he'll yeah. do it yeah that'd be cool man and do you got anything like you want to like say before we like wrap it up or anything or do you uh, anything you want to shout out or i, I mean, don't know man i mean Sullen clothing. Anyone, anyone that knows our brand, well, not anyone, but our, our philosophy is um, we treat our product like lettuce. The stuff we get product in, and if it doesn't, if it's not gone in a month or two, we ordered too much, you know. So <laughs> it's frustrating for our guys, but it's also kind of like I said, our philosophy where product's always coming in and then it's it's gone. So yeah. we're fortunate to have so many badass artists that do contribute artwork. But if I had something to promote, like when's this dropping? How many days? Maybe a week or two. Okay, yeah. so if I had something to promote, we could be sold out of it. By then. That's true, right? Yeah, that's we crazy. Purpose, we purposely order a small amount of everything, so it's like yeah. everything's almost like limited edition prints. And um, and it comes in and it's gone. But Ryan is just pumping. That is what's cool about it too, is that it is all kind of limited edition. Yeah, everything is. Ryan's like, always only pumping out shirts. new stuff. He's always got some new idea, some new project. Right now we have. Um, where we call it Letterhead's Hat, where once a month we're dropping a new hat, and then we developed a with New Era. It's a hat case. It's a hard held hat case that you can fit. I think up to three hats in with a little handle on it. So um, the hat is made by New Era, which is already nice. It comes with this hat case, and we we ordered a small amount. And like I said, we want it to last for about a week. It sold out in, I think, 24 hours, maybe 48 hours. But the first one we did sold out in less than two days. Damn. So, you know, it's like, okay, we're on to something. And then we have another one drop in, uh, well, maybe right when this drops, the 27th. uh, On Wednesday, we're doing our next one. So once a month, we're doing a Letterhead's hat. 
And then um, I still have my badass hat up there, but it just doesn't fit me that great. Oh, the special yeah. edition I one. I can't wear the. Yeah, that no, was the that's the leather hat. one, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, in the back, you know. Yeah, and I just, those, <laughs> just for just for guys that, that, that made our. But yeah. we we drop a new ter- a new t shirt every Tuesday, and then we drop a capsule, which is just you know like a, a bigger collection every other Thursday. So, literally. Every week we're dropping new product, and every other week we're dropping a, a good bulk of new product. Yeah, um, that's great. So, yeah, we just had our n- 10 new flannels come in late last week. Which you brought me a couple of people. Like, you got to check those out. Thank, thank you very thank much you. for bringing me a little care package, dude. Yeah, that was of awesome, course. you know. I know you and I, we both like flannels. Yeah, um, dude. But, yeah. Well, Solon- I still have, like, an older one right here. That thing's worked, bro. That's an old Solon one right there. Oh, that dude. is. I still wear it all the time. Good. Yeah, yeah. Glad we got you updated. <laughs> hey, got me updated, dude. Stoked on that, you know. Hey, I'm stoked on this right here. Like, Thank I'm, you, man. I'm so pumped on this. I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be on here. Dude. You and I, I feel like we just talked each other's ear off for mm. for an hour it straight. It didn't even seem that. I don't even know how long it's been. Like, usually I just guess it. It's probably good that you and I haven't hung out in a little bit either, you know? Because yeah, it's yeah. like a lot of just catching up. Totally. You know? No, man. But I was thank honored you. to have you, dude. I just really wanted somebody on that i loved you know so it's always good man I got just trying to get my buddies well. on you know yeah check it out Solon clothing right yep solonclothing.com follow us on all the pages and uh you know if you got any art you want to submit whether you're tagging us dming us emailing us we're gonna see it if you don't get a response right away don't get your feelings hurt just totally. try again you know try again. um because we are always welcoming welcoming new artists, and there are times where maybe the first few times it doesn't work, you know. Yes. But I know I was thinking about your shirts. I remember was the first one the skull with the with the, the girl on the top. It was like the girl and the skull on the bottom, like but almost that, like a reflection. Oh, that wasn't the one with the leaves though. The red. No, that was the well, not second leaves, one with the petals. That was the second one, yeah. the skull and rose one. That I feel one. like the best one I've done for you guys though was the. The skull and crossbones. That one was cool, but I think I think the one with the pedals. I feel like that one got out the most. Oh, it did. Okay, I could be wrong, but I just remember that one. Getting I think it. Tim was telling me because that one got into like the one the like how was it called piracy or something you guys call it, and it was like the skull with the crossbones, which yeah. I guess we got into the buckle and some of those stores. And that so was a Tim cool was one as well. That one got you know that one was, had contraction, yeah. but I but I the think, one with the pedals we put on a sweatshirt. Yeah, you did it and in a, a girl bunch, shirt. Yeah. That yeah. one had a lot more traction. For yeah, sure. I think we did a girl's V-neck, a sweatshirt. And that's that whole skull and rose thing that we were talking about earlier. You know, yeah. it's that those essence things. You know, which yeah. is good. I, Another thing I know, um, and this is me talking for Ryan, but it just me overhearing, overhearing his conversation with artists. Um, he always talks about take a, a traditional idea. When I say traditional, I don't mean like Americana, but take a a popular idea. You know, like whether it's skull and roses. Um, or, or you know, Sacred Heart, or whatever these popular tattoos have been done over and over again. But just put a, a different twist on totally. it. Totally. You know, you totally. take you take a popular subject and put a different twist. You know, maybe instead of the the sword going through the heart, it's something else. Yeah. You know? Just think outside the box. I mean, even with our logo, you know, I mean the crossbones. Yeah, a lot of people do all these. Yours cool killed versions. it. Yeah. yeah even it's our really logo cool. is kind of played a play with the crossbones. Except I think with brushes. skulls, roses, these things that are just natural in our lives, like as far as like like t-shirt designs tattoo designs they just will never die yeah because they're part of ever everyday life you know skull is always going to be popular because yeah. it's death you know so it's yeah. it's really cool with those kind of subject matters they'll never go away you right. know like uh, some stuff comes and goes you know but that stuff's going to stay around which is really neat question for you are you going to finish that painting yeah i'll finish that painting. <laughs> <laughs> i got two hours on it man we're so, over yeah. we're long overdue we'll for a jeremiah bro. t-shirt yeah, it's been it's been a few one. years yeah and i'll have you back on again too man we'll just kind of do this awesome. whenever you want man if you ever want to like come on and you know, talk about some shit. Absolutely. I'll you bug know, you. I'm up the street, I'll too. I'll bug you when we got something to promote. Yeah, yeah. I'll be stoked to drop this one, too. It'll be really cool for people to hear, yeah, you know, too. you guys' inner workings a little bit. I know you guys do a lot of these interviews a lot and stuff, but, you know, for magazines it's and shit. It's been a while. But, yeah, it's like, let's get it going again. I'm proud of you, man. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Proud of you guys, too, brother. Thank you. All right, man. We did it.